I really cannot stand blatant cash grabs. And this movie don't get no more blatant than that. This movie was not even produced by a human being. It was produced by a soda, Pepsi. Wow. Pepsi came out and said, you know what? They, Pepsi commissioned this script. You, you know, you're saying it's a two-hour commercial, and yet somehow I didn't know Pepsi was associated until you told me. Martin, I saw you with a Pepsi in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> When you came out, see that's how good the marketing is. You didn't even know it was in your hand. <laughs> man, man, I ain't see Pepsi in nowhere. Go. <laughs>
basketball players in bad makeup is not a new thing at all. Apparently not. Basketball players love to dress up in costume. Uh, it, it, it's almost like they love basketball on Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, any chance they can get to dress up as another character, that, that's how I know a lot of these athletes have a desire to act. Yeah. Because we've seen this before. LeBron James had... LeBron James is so so famous, $153 million man. He said, you know what? One LeBron is not enough. He made a whole family of LeBrons. You can't get through Detroit training in no pool. You, you think Michael training in the pool? No, I don't think so. It's not look Funny thing is, that's better makeup than <laughs> Uncle Drew. Well, because it's barely any makeup. They just put a little gray, uh, <laughs> some, some, some gray fuzz on it, on his chin. And dark glasses. And somehow still works better. <laughs> LeBron was not even the first one to do that. Y'all thought, oh, LeBron, he's such a trendsetter. <laughs> oh, my God. No, uh, back in the day, Larry Johnson. Larry Johnson had grandmama. These are my new shoes from Converse. They're so light and so fast, my grandmama can whoop you in them. Grandmama! Sorry. Let's go. <laughs> Remember. A lot of people... To this day, still don't know that those are two different people. <laughs> <laughs> they still think Grandmama is just a big ass black woman. <laughs> uh, don't, don't let that secret out. You're gonna break some hearts. I'm sorry. Let, it must be known now. I hate to tell you. <laughs> two decades later, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> but you know, so you look at this. It's like ain't nothing new under the sun right here. But let's go ahead and take a look at the trailer for Uncle Drew. And then we'll come back and, like I said, we'll get this uh, bullshit review <laughs> done and then we'll be out of here. How's that geriatric team of yours? You get them all individual life alert bracelets? You still don't believe it, too. <laughs> I got these. Nick Crow. That's me, man. That's an asshole thing to do, but that makes but me laugh. funny doing that. <laughs> So as you can see, here's not anything really that you haven't seen before right here. You got you got a bunch of famous basketball players right here. Kyrie Irving, Shaquille O'Neal, Chris Webber, Reggie Miller, Nate Robinson, all doing old Negro cosplay. And they, <laughs> and they are you got you got a little uh what's his name little uh Lil Rel. Rel, Lil Rel, Lil Rel Howry right there he's a guy who he's they they really tried to make you feel sorry for him this is it wasn't enough that he was just a loser in life he was a loser and an orphan <laughs> you know? yeah I know <laughs> <laughs> I never had any family he ain't, ne he ain't never had ain't no family no family none <laughs> and the only so you were your your mom was a it was a virgin birth. Not even no mother. <laughs> yeah. I was he's, just hatched into the world. He's a test tube baby. <laughs> Ain't trying to lay it on thick. And then there was a little little white orphan. Ruined his basketball career before uh -huh. he even got started. His only chance at like redeeming himself now is uh, winning this street ball tournament. But nobody wants to play with him ever since he got uh, he, he got uh, uh, his other star players taken from him by his rival. It's funny. These two orphans just grew up and, uh, still hating each, each other. other. Yeah. Still, they're still messing with each other. <laughs> Nick Kroll is the other orphan, of course. Uh, and so uh, his only hope now is this geriatric, geriatric, uh, ger goddamn, what geriatric, you, geriatric, shit. That, yeah. R, that R just hiding from my ass. Well, well there's the, the, the secret legend of Uncle Drew. Of Uncle Drew? Who was Uncle Drew even when he was young. I don't know how that worked. <laughs> um, but he was the greatest basketball player who just quit the game. And now he just kind of roams around, shows up in, on street courts, schools the young kids and go on about his business. And Lil Rel says, you, you old man, you can help me build a team. That's yes. Gonna, I'm going to win the Rucker and get my, get my mojo back and get paid. Get my girl back. Get my girl yeah. back. <laughs> Everything's going to work out for me. Yes. Does it? Oh, we don't want to spoil nothing for you. <laughs> Y'all have seen movies you, like this before. Oh, right? this movie's so unpredictable. I can't tell you. I can't spoil it for you. <laughs> Oh, which is funny too because I was like, this, this Uncle Drew can play. Why did he stop? You know, if he can play like this at 75, yeah. Why was he playing street ball? Why was he not playing for like God or something, you know? Well, I don't spoil anything. They do tell you. I, but man, that ain't enough to ruin a career like that for Uncle Drew, the way Uncle Drew can play. Because that's one of the things with the movie you have to ask yourself. It's like, 
wow, man, you really wanted to make an underdog story. Y'all didn't, y'all, you didn't make them like 50 or 60 years old. You I made know. those motherfuckers almost 80. That is a funny thing <laughs> because it could have worked with them being 50 because at that point, the athletes, gotta, they got to give it up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, they got to retire. And they even interview a bunch of older athletes who aren't 80 who you can tell are too old to still do it. Yeah. <laughs> but no, you know, I figured they thought this will be funnier. In the tradition of uh, – was it, is it dirty grandpa or, or bad grandpa? I get a mix. Uh, 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 what's, what's, the, what's the Johnny Knoxville one? Bad grandpa. Yeah. Bad grandpa. Yeah. Or in the tradition of every black person wanting to dress up in a costume or a fat suit or something. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, because it's, it's almost like if you stay in the game long enough, you're going to be in some kind of crazy black makeup. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Martin, I, I think. That, the, that's next for us. For the fifth anniversary party, we in, <laughs> we in, fa- we in fat suits. <laughs> Old fat suits. Yeah, old fat suits. We coming out there belly busting each other. <laughs> <laughs> she like that's sexy. <laughs> we'll let you in on it, girl. <laughs> yeah, but the trick behind that is that you you look old and fat, but then you do something only a, a young man can do. That's it. But but we're actually old, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be that far. Well, off. we just need to be fat. Now. <laughs> Yeah, the Dust us a little, a little, a little, a little, a little baby powder. And out there. I'm gonna tell you something, man. Right off the bat, a lot of reasons to just hate this movie, man. Yeah, it's that based mo- on a series of commercials. The movies already got me mad. You know, yeah. The thing is, first of all, I told the people this in Chicago. I feel a little, a little rip, ripped off. Y'all know I directed one particular movie out there, and I looked at this and I said, "Uncle Drew ain't nothing but Space Jam." Sure. <laughs> if you replace the cartoon characters with old Negroes, <laughs> yeah, uh, fake old Negroes, you know, <laughs> mud babies or whatever. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, I looked at that and like this is kind of the same thing. I feel way. like it's a reverse Space Jam. Sort of, yeah. Where, yeah, where but, Lil Rel is the Michael is the reverse Michael Jackson. Oh, I mean Michael Jordan. Oh, so wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, he, he's the reverse Michael Jordan, and then all the other guys are the actual star. Yeah, players. but the theme. Yeah. You know, oh yeah. Like, it's almost this the spiritual successor mm-hmm. to Space Jam, <laughs> except they didn't have the budget. <laughs> they didn't have the budget to, to animate cartoons. Yeah, but money costs too much money these yeah. days. <laughs> so hey, just put this mud on your face, <laughs> sprinkle some cotton balls on there. We good to go. <laughs> you know the, the the other thing with this is that. I really cannot stand blatant cash grabs. And this movie don't get no more blatant than that. This movie was not even produced by a human being. It was produced by a soda, Pepsi. Wow. Pepsi came out and said, you know what? Pepsi commissioned this script because they needed to have some sort of a demographic uh, uh, marketing. And they wanted to do it through the NBA because they felt like that was cool with young people. Sure. They said, we'll get these players – we we'll get some of the older people out there, older generation, but for some of these younger players, we we'll get some of the younger people out there if we have them come out and do this silly ass movie right here, which is nothing but a two hour commercial. This movie is almost two hours. It is nothing but a commercial for Pepsi. So they can get your kids to come in and uh, I guess, I don't know, was Pepsi ever not popular with kids these days? You know, it, it's funny <laughs> because I, you, you know, you're saying it's a two hour commercial, and yet somehow I. Didn't know Pepsi was associated until you told me. Like, they spent all this money to get me to buy Pepsi, and it didn't work. Martin, I saw you with a Pepsi in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> when you came out, see, that's how good the marketing is. You didn't even know it was in your hand. <laughs> man, man, I ain't see Pepsi in nowhere. Go! <laughs> I didn't see Pepsi at all where I drink this fine, bubbly elixir. Mm. <laughs> That's how great the market it was, man. Refreshing. <laughs> but, you know, the other thing is, and, and I guess maybe with me, I don't like it to the point that even if I just hear about it, it's already kind of tainted for me. Well, to, to me, it's just because of how much sports is marketed. And, yeah, we, we're, we're seeing from the commercial mm-hmm. the bad makeup. And sports figures, they tend to not be able to act. And, and also – there's a lot of cheating that goes on with movies with with uh, with, with sports figures, especially basketball players. But it's almost like they know. Well, if we throw in enough references to basketball, who's, yeah, who's got to write jokes? And that that's true. That is true. It's because it, 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 it just seems like it's it, it it's you know from the outside looking in, it's lazy on all fronts. And also, it didn't help that what was going on on the screen was kind of derivative. It was, not, it was sure. very commercialized. Yeah. As I told people in Chicago, look, 
is a movie with a bunch of black basketball players in there. This counts as a black movie, which means that even if there's just four or five people in the in, in the audience, somebody ain't gonna be able to shut up. <laughs> That's true. Usually, black people are talking because they are with somebody else. Uh huh. But I've just learned that if black people go to a movie by themselves, they'll still talk. They will talk to yeah. themselves. They will not even talk. They will sing and they will dance. Uh-huh. Uncle Drew likes the old jams. And one of the old jams they play, he gets in that in his van and puts on that eight track and it's Lakeside. You know, oh. fantastic boy. Right. Y- y'all heard this shit before. <laughs> There was a Negro sitting next to me singing every word. When it came on, oh, I don't doubt it. He was <laughs> he he was like the old black person at the family reunion. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and he actually said it. He told to I'm, people, I'm not even lying to himself. He was, <laughs> yeah, shit, that's my shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, and looking at you like, why aren't you dancing? No, I want to say something to him, but he actually gave me that look like. <laughs> <laughs> like he's enjoying himself man. <laughs> You know okay, Came out look like It's good ain't it You cannot Man when somebody's Enjoying know, themselves That much Like bless your heart Exactly Oh they just dance <laughs> Yeah in that seat <laughs> I can see you would've Been doing the same thing I would've been If I was sitting there I'd be like Hey man could you Slide over a little bit <laughs> That would have been y'all coming off that boat. <laughs> hey, nah, I think it's you, Martin, down there. <laughs> what, are they dressed wait, wait, like... Wait, wait, uh, an admiral's hat? Are they dressed like the... the they like, dressed like pirates. Is that the... Is this, a, is this a, like the a production of Peter Pan? <laughs> <laughs> By the Pirates of Pen? Yes. Wait a minute. This song wasn't in the program. <laughs> Peter Pan coming out. <laughs> uh, nah, man. And finally... Finally, it's you know the the makeup, the makeup in this, it's so bad. I was I, I was telling Martin when we went to Chicago. I said, uh, your Uncle Drew, Kyrie Irving, man, your main guy. Yeah, that's your main guy. You his his makeup is the worst. He looks like a piece of shit that somebody dropped on the carpet, man, <laughs> and just picked up. <laughs> it, it, it does look. Are you like, mad? Why you what are you, you hear him growling? It does look kind of like clay. It does. Yeah. It does, man. This it looks bad. Uh, I had the people laughing in Chicago because I said, "You got your boy over here, Chris Webber. Chris Webber looked like a black Robbie Rotten <laughs> <laughs> from Lazy Town. <laughs> Look at that shit, man. <laughs> uh, and the one that really got to me was because not everybody needed makeup, man. You know, especially as bad as the makeup was. For some reason, they wanted to try their hand at recreating the barbershop scene from Coming, Coming to, to America. America yeah. So they put JB Smooth, Smooth in makeup. And I was like, he didn't even need it. He didn't. I, I thought his makeup was fine. I, I liked his. It has dimension to it. You can see that not everybody was worked on by the same person. Okay, because I told people in Chicago, I thought he looked like a warrior. No, he, he, he <laughs> does. He does with, with, with that big mustache. But I'm like, okay, if, if if I look at you and I can't right off tell who you are, eh, then I think it's good. Okay, because I knew it was J.B. Smooth when well, I saw him. Once he it. starts talking, you know it's him. No, I knew it was him. <laughs> I got up and I, when he came on screen, I said, J.B. Smooth. Now, I, I think Reggie Miller's makeup looks good. Reggie, there's some people in there that look fine. I, you know what? I even think that uh, uh, I even think that Chris Webber looks fine. Uh, and the and you know and and uh, Reggie Allen has like very little makeup on. Yeah. You know, so it, his is okay. You know, I was thinking that with him. I was like, dang, I guess he just got older. But at the end, you had left before. You probably left before the, the uh-huh. end credits. But they show him when they're putting the makeup on him, and I was like, oh no, he's still much younger than. Oh this. no, I've seen pictures of him. no. That's oh. not him at all. No, they just they just did. You know, I guess. I guess with some of them they like had money and then they just ran out with us. Yeah, because <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal even even he looks fine, man. And they make a Sometimes. joke. Well, they make a joke about him. And they say he look like Wolverine's granddad. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know? so I was like, okay, at least you pointed out. Right, right. The one that they the, the the funniest one where they really did run out of money was uh, was your boy uh, Mike Epps. Mike, oh cause, yeah, because Mike oh, yeah. is supposed to be old, <laughs> right? But he doesn't have makeup. So he's just, no, he's just talking was, old. They just gave him a hat. Yeah, they just gave him a hat. <laughs> yeah, they just gave him a hat. And, 
and dusted some white up in his face. Right. <laughs> cause he came up, cause like he looks like he, yeah, he, he look, looked like Mike Epps. He looked like Mike Epps. Me coming like, oh hey y'all, I'm so old. You young bloods oh, don't know gee. about this. My all right. It's like motherfucker, you look like Mike Epps today. Right. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> like I said, man. Again, told the people in Chicago, I don't expect everything to be the award-winning Suicide Squad. No. <laughs> you know, the, the Academy Award-winning Suicide Squad. You know that one for makeup, Martin? Yeah, I know. But they had that DC money. It ain't like the Marvel checks. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm not expecting that at all, man. Uh, so even with that, I was kind of disappointed in the makeup. A lot of things I'm disappointed with. And yet, Martin... I still enjoyed myself. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know it, why. It's, it's the weirdest thing when you come out of something like this and you're like, wait, who is that laughing so loud? Oh, that's me. <laughs> um, I, 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 I mean, uh, on top of all this, I thought the first, at least the first third of this movie just wasn't even funny. I was like, man, these, these, it's, it's not well written. These, these, I'm, these, these jokes are terrible. But ultimately, it was. The actors, the the basketball players, mm-hmm. that were really good, and they really threw themselves in, into these roles. You get you caught you get caught up with them. They yeah. have so much fun. You can't help it. And even Shaq, it's, it's, you know, I was like, man, Shaq is enunciating. Not only can I hear what he's saying, <laughs> but he's he's genuinely funny here. Oh no, he no uh, Shaq Shaquille O'Neal. I, I don't I, I don't know if they like like they gave him the only good writing in the movie as far as some of the lines go, because the other the other uh, the other actors. I say actors loosely because they're basketball players, right. you know, ex basketball players. But th- for for not being professional actors, yeah, they're doing a damn good job, man. Yeah, you put them on all that makeup and they just got lost in it. And yeah, uh, Kyrie Irving, as, uh, Uncle Drew, he really does carry this movie. Where uh, outside of him having to use the word young blood with every piece of dialogue he said, I'm like, guys, <laughs> at some point go through the script and cut some of this. He doesn't have to say it every time. I dare y'all to do a <laughs> drinking game. <laughs> Well, you drink every time Kyrie uh, uh, Irving says "Young Blood," you'll be looking like him at the end of the yeah. game. <laughs> but I'm twelve. <laughs> but but his character brings a lot of heart to this movie. That by the time you hit the the third act, yeah, you're fully rooting for them. Well, that's the th- that's the thing about the film, man. They really know how to make you root for the old dude, yeah. for the, uh, the underdog, uh, underdogs. Dude. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and knowing that, uh, you know, these are real basketball players who can play, it kind of has some authenticity to it. But, you know, whenever these, whenever these young bloods start talking shit, uh-huh. you can't wait for <laughs> Uncle Drew to get up and whoop their ass. Uh-huh. You talk a lot of smack for geriatrics. It's a shame you can't back any of it up. Oh. Oh. <laughs> he even got that whole that old head shake when he gets oh on oh, my nuts oh Joe nuts <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. don't do it like that oh. I want to do one person in the audience they even said fuck you <laughs> get him Drew they thought Drew was a real person <laughs> You get lost with Uncle Drew, man. Uh-huh. Kyrie Irving is—he really embraces his role, man. Yeah, you know what's weird? Because I something I forgot about when we were talking about it in Chicago was how the movie started with this, with this documentary feel about because they do uh, the the ESPN thirty for thirty or whatever. Yeah, 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 about the legend of Uncle Drew. But it, it felt like it was a different movie when it started than what it turned into. Well, I thought it was going to be a mockumentary. Me too. You know, and, like they were really throwing in on the whole mockumentary thing, and then it just switched out of that. Which. I, I still I mean, think for the better. It's it's good that it did. I still think they would have done well sticking to a mockumentary type of format, uh, like they did with something like um, uh, uh, what was the one that uh, Fear of a Black Hat? Uh, no, no, no. They did like, like Dewey Cox. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, I like that kind of thing when they do that. While I enjoyed this movie, they do everything that it that has been done hundreds of times before oh, yeah. for the old versus young yeah the the the, the old versus yeah, young yeah. trope and we, uh, you know they of course you get schooled in something where nobody knows how good you are you know yeah. that you get you get you get sharp you get played uh, uh, and the one that really that I I'm getting tired of seeing in anything uh it it goes for old versus young fish out of water uh-huh. uh undercover things you know the dance sequence sure you know these uh, somebody always wants to make fun of someone, and then uh, the person has to get up and show them their moves. I can dance they, too. They can dance too. Except, I, and, and again, I said this, I said this in Chicago. Normally, where I like, I I hate the person that's trash talking. The person that's being an asshole here, actually, they they make a lot of sense. 
<laughs> Do we amuse you? Yo, you're in the club and you're pushing 80, bro. That's a valid question. <laughs> you know, that's a valid obser- observation. Does the club have an age limit? My, what he got? There was a dignified like a uh, uh, bar right down the street where they could have sat down and talked. It ain't playing music like this. <laughs> they might like this kind of music. So in other words, so, so they, they're not allowed to enjoy this kind of music. So in other words, uh, thirty years from now, look for me and Martin. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> look for me, Lay young blood. <laughs> yeah, I, I, thirty years. I want to. I want to replay your words back to you. You're like, oh, I was young and stupid. I didn't know what I was saying. <laughs> and what's up with your boy, Frederick Douglass? <laughs> yeah, don't get mad. You look like Frederick Douglass, man. No. I'm you like, can't say shit. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna look like an 80 year old buck we said. <laughs> yeah, you can't say shit, man. You gotta take that one. Hold my beer. Don't try. Boss racing, ain't Three start to rain and take the outside game. Need my name on my jersey and all cow. Crossed over to my goal, everything. Okay, these scenes are fun. I know why they put them in, but I will have to make out two little observations. Here. One is that they don't dance all that well. That part that you saw right there, it starts out good. Yeah. Then they do that old uncle dance, and you know, like, they really are the old uncles when they start dancing. Well, it ain't that good. Well, but that's the thing. I was, because usually I hate a scene like this in a movie. Like like watching Cocoon, I like it, except when they get to the, 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 the break, break dance. dance. <laughs> By the way, that part's so embarrassing, you can't even find it on you on YouTube. Oh, really? I've, I've tried. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> even like, like, man, this is stupid. This is unrealistic. It's no. like, 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 you're making a great movie here. <laughs> and you just got a little too ahead of yourself. And this whole, this whole white man break this. <laughs> 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 I understand he's young now, but that still wouldn't teach him how to break dance. No! What kind of alien powers is that? Yeah. All of a sudden, you get the powers of the street. Right. <laughs> so here, when they start doing that, I was like, oh, no, not this. The younger guys, of course, are better. Yeah. Much better. But when they, but when these guys get out there and start doing these old moves, you know, it'd be one thing if the guys that they were, that they were battling against would be like, all right, respect, old man. You know, but no, they're like, oh, you've defeated us again. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Their dancing powers are too much for us. <laughs> yeah, did, did you think it was weird that I mean that in a club you had dance troops like professional crumping dance troops that suddenly get out to challenge these old people <laughs> with coordinated moves? But like, it's just a nightclub where everybody just goes to dance and, and hook up. And they're old dudes, man. Why you gotta like yeah. do that to them? And you're like, you know, they they're like, all right, we just got back from the competition. Now let's show these oldsters. <laughs> let's serve them. <laughs> If you ain't got makeup on, you're probably not as good as the other guys, you know, because you're, you're kind of doing your own thing. Like the, like the basketball players, they were, they were doing something different, man. You know, they're actually playing different characters. Right. And that's cool. Your other people in uh, here. Unlike uh, Tiffany Haddish, who's just playing Tiffany Haddish. Tiffany Haddish. you but, I love <laughs> Tiffany Haddish, but you, you got you to change it up. There's, so. there's going to be an expiration date on that. Yeah. <laughs> this Haddish is old. <laughs> you can I get something else? <laughs> uh, and... Um, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, little little Rel. Little Rel Howry, man. He's he's the, he's that he's still new. He still he got that uh, uh, get out scent on him. You know, everybody still love him. But and but I will I will tell you this: Tiffany Haddish being Tiffany Haddish, uh, that's one thing. But uh, 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 this guy right here, man, at least he was the emotional character in the movie. And you yeah, you did was. feel for him. He was. I mean, you know, it's it's mostly his story arc. Although yeah, you forget that sometimes because he gets upstaged by by the basketball players. Of course. Um, it, but it was something that occurred to me, and I didn't think to say it until we had uh, Alec Miracle up, mm-hmm. is that he was a, pretty much a discount Kevin Hart. Here. It was like they, <laughs> they wrote the script for Kevin Hart, and he, would, he was just like, that ain't near enough money. Because <laughs> 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 they make all the short jokes and just everything that's set up for him. Oh, no, Hollywood is happy. We've, we got a, we got a uh, discount <laughs> Kevin Hart. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. It's, it, in, in, no, that, that, is a, that was a good observation there. And you know, but I would tell you the person that was the funniest to me, the person that I thought was not going to be, and I chuckled a little bit in the trailer when Nick Kroll did his thing. I didn't think anybody else would like it, so I just kept it to myself. The only way to defeat one's enemy is to become one's enemy. What? What? Wait, 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 wait. wait. Stop, Stop it! it. Come on, girl. You're crazy. You're psycho. I laughed at that during the trailer, but I never admitted it. But he's funny in the movie. Well, I've seen Nick Kroll play this kind of asshole villain before, and. And I've, and I've seen it get old. And here, it always cut right before it got to a point where it was on my nerves. So it just kept me laughing. Yeah, I don't know what it was. but and Plus, he wasn't in it a lot. Right. Like, right at the moment where you probably would get tired of him, they, you know, mm-hmm. they cut him out. Uh, and look, you can see the movie and tell that 
Look, man, they can't even spend money on the makeup, so you know they ain't spent no money on lighting and sure. <laughs> you know it's like they did what they did what they had to do. It's you know? actually not as cheap of a movie as I expected it to be. I thought the same. It's still cheap. You can look at yeah. it and tell uh, that this is not a high budget movie, and that's fine. That is fine. Uh, you know, this is a movie that, as I said, it's one of those uh, Hollywood. You know, it, look, it's cheap for Hollywood. Yeah, you sure. know, this, this is pocket change for Hollywood. Look, man, I was on a roll. I was ready for my next victim. I just got off a of show dogs. I know. <laughs> I just got off a of Gotti. You know, I was like, who's my next victim? I was ready to go up against Uncle Drew. And I got in there and I and as much as as much as I really did, because I know y'all wanted it. I wanted to talk shit, but I oh, couldn't, yeah. man. I couldn't. I said, I'm having a good time. I and I no, don't get me wrong, I would not go out and watch this on my own, probably, but I will say this that if I I saw families in there. Yeah. And it is it is a perfect family it movie, man. It is a man. really good family. It's, it's inoffensive. No. Uh-huh. It's not nasty. It's not, you know, it's one of those, and I know you see a lot of black comedians, so you probably think there's a lot of dirty jokes in there. No. That's not. This is no. really a, a PG movie uh-huh. meant for the family. And it's entertaining. Yeah. On 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 its own level. And I said, you know what? That's why I was saying, man, it's one of those movies where you say, man, he ain't bothering nobody. Exactly. <laughs> leave, 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 leave Uncle Drew alone. He ain't hurting nobody. <laughs> well, you hurting that dude right there. <laughs> He was asking for it. Yeah, but he was asking for it. You know, he messing with him is good. Y'all gonna think I'm crazy, man. Somebody in Chicago got mad at me for saying I thought I was about to get shot. I said I give this movie a matinee, a low matinee, but family. You bring your kids in there. You enjoy it. With the, it really is on a, a Saturday afternoon family film. Mm-hmm. Let's just go watch something, have some light fun. And I cannot, I can't criticize it anymore for, for for doing what it means, what it what it means to do. It's one of those movies where, okay, I was like. Eight years old in this movie that came on TV yeah. all the time, and I loved it. Now, when I saw it again at like 18 or 19, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is shit, shitty, man. This is this movie's not that good. But I still have fun memories of it. Like, I, I recognize it for not being that great of a film, but... And, and by that rationale, that's why I give it a high rental instead of a, a low match. Oh, okay. Well, way to turn my shit against me. <laughs> <laughs> Martin just juked me on the court. <laughs> oh, shit. My ankle, Martin. Martin, shit. You just broke my ankle. <laughs> And dumped on you. Uh, <laughs> Pulled Uncle Drew on me, man. Uh, because you know it, it is what it is. To to me, it's one of those movies where if it if it came on TV and you saw it, it'd be like, wow, that was so much fun. And yeah, yeah the, the family would sit around the TV and watch it, and probably could even become that thing that you'd all bond over all the time. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I have a feeling it's gonna be one of those movies that kids are gonna be talking about. Mm-hmm. Like, they, who you who you raised by Uncle Drew? <laughs> 